Hey everyone, I'm Nora and Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today, 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 we are continuing the Beginner's Guide series and talking about my favorite little acts of terror, the Gene Stealer Cult. In this video, we are going to go over their basic lore as well as some of their tactics and the Beginner's Guide of Buying. $100 intro into this army. So, with that all said, I want you guys to know that I do have a Teespring merchandise store. You can find the links in the description down below, as well as seeing some really cool, really unique shirts from the channel, from all of the artists here that work for the channel. And you can get yourself some really cool stuff, including a Warboss Lex shirt or a Magus. <laughs> I really, 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 really like the, the chibi art that we have for the channel. You can see these in battle reports as well. But with all of those useless plugs out of the way, let's talk about the Gene Stealer Cult, the Gene Team. Gene Stealer Cults are a nightmare for a world to deal with. Gene Stealer Cults are a, how to explain this one? Okay, so when a lonely gene stealer is floating through the void of space and lands upon a planet, either by sneaking aboard a ship or literally be shot out of a spore pod into the void of the known galaxy, it lands on a planet and starts setting up its cult. The gene stealer becomes the patriarch of this cult. Everything worshipping him or her it really depends. It, it, I guess it doesn't matter what the gene stealers, what gender they are, since they can simply switch to whatever's needed as they can adapt to the environment instantaneously. So, with that being said, gene stealer lands on a planet. Gene stealer goes like this. Wowie whoa, we are lost on a planet. This is pretty neat. I must sneak around. He sneaks around until he gets to the underhive of a planet, so that being a paradise world, an agri world, or a hive city, or mechanicus facility or any type of world in the imperium including feudal that's a thing so the gene stealer will start beginning he will begin his cult by abducting women and force impregnating them with the first of the hybrids this will spawn the gen 1 hybrids which are the horrific little buggers called metamorphs or just hybrids acolyte hybrids they also spawn aberrants at this time. Uh, they're, they're, they're creepy and uh But as the cult grows, these monstrosities go out, find more women, impregnate them, and the cult begins looking more and more like the host species, up until the point where they're pretty much indistinguishable from their host species, except for a mark on their head. Now, once they start doing this, they will start producing shock troops, as well as pure strain gene stealers. They'll even produce leaders of the cult known as Magus and where's the other one? Primus. I don't know if you can buy him separate yet. Um, apparently you can't. No, but there he is, the Primus. Once the cult has grown to a certain size, it'll start its uprising. It'll start attacking the planet and taking out key political figures, military leaders, as well as genuinely damaging the planet to the point where it is doing infighting on itself. This is when they will send out their psychic beacons to the Tyranid fleets in space that they worship as star gods or as just gods, depending on which coven it is. Then the Tyranids will come down to the planet, which has no defenses against them at this point because the Gene Stealer Cult has been successful and will begin consuming the planet, starting with the Gene Stealer Cult itself. Now, there are some exceptions. A gene seal cult might still be used if the planet is putting up a relatively hard fight. But the Tyranids will still indoctrinate a bunch of them and eat a bunch of them to gain the knowledge of the planetary population and defense force. This will allow the Tyranids to gain a huge advantage when fighting the enemy and eventually consuming the planet before shooting out some more spores and doing the exact same thing. So, that is their lore. How do the Gene Steel Colts fight? Close combat. Literally, close combat. Some mid-range, but most of it is extreme close combat. Immediately upon starting on the battlefield, they get right into close combat and they destroy everything that they touch. In fact, one of their tournament lists is called Muscle Beach and it is hilarious. 
That being said, how do they do this? Well, they have this special ability called, called ambush. And when they do this, they set up little markers on the field instead of actual units. And a bunch of these can just come in whenever they want, starting turn two, at the enemy nine inches away, while following some of these special rules that they have in the codex that allows them to move closer, shoot, or engage directly into close combat once they pop in. Now, with that all said, I have actual videos on how to infiltrate with the Gene Sela cult and how their stuff works. If I'm smart after this video, after I record this, I will put a link in the description down below. More than likely, I actually won't and I will forget. So that's going to be my bad. Oopsie daisy. Anyway, let's get right into it. What should you buy to start your Gene Stealer Cult army? Well, first you have to ask yourself, how do you want to run your Gene Stealer Cult? Do you want to run the insane close combat? Do you want to run mid-range close combat? Or do you want to run mid-range close combat because they don't have long-range capabilities? One of the cool additions to the, Tyr to the Gene Seal Occult is that they can ally with Tyranids as well as allying with Imperial Guard, though the Guard lose all of their abilities, so keep that in mind as we push forward. One of the best units in their entire codex is the Jackals. Jackals are incredible units and pop up and throw a bunch of bombs using two stratagems and then run away like cowards because that's what they do, and it is amazing. If you are gonna run the Jackal list, I highly suggest you get at least three to four boxes of Jackals and run them that way. Using the extras and buying a sniper rifle off a third party website to make yourself a Jackal Alphas because paying $35 for one bike is silly. Just go ahead and buy yourself a sniper rifle off of a third party website and put the bit on one of the bikers and say that that is your Jackal Alphas. In fact, I've made custom Jackal Alphas before, and I think they look a little bit better, as well as having a Jackal Alphas. So let's keep going, shall we? Now there is the Magus. Magus is beautiful. I absolutely love this model right here. I think it is 100% gorgeous. It is hands down my favorite Gene Stila Cult model. So once you start expanding your collection, I would highly suggest that you get yourself a Magus. Um, but since you are starting out, I would start out with nothing better than the Brood Coven. The Brood Coven is extremely useful. It comes with the uh, Patriarch, a Magus, and a Primus. The Primus is extremely useful as well as the Magus being extremely useful. The Patriarch is mediocre. He's kind of just there. He only benefits really gene stealers. Mediocre compared to Tyrion. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is probably get yourself some bodies. You're really going to need some bodies. Keep in mind that the Acolyte Hybrids and the Acolyte Metamorphs are the exact same box. So that can help save you some money if you wanted to make Metamorphs. You just buy a couple of boxes of Gene Stealers and you can put the arms on them and have Metamorphs. But if you are going to start a Gene Stealer Cult army, unfortunately the intro is a little bit more than I, I, I hate saying this, but it's a little bit more than the typical armies. Now you can make it cheaper by buying the Magus and then buying two boxes of Acolytes to have 10 Acolytes and have a good amount of stuff for $110. And that is a really good start to the army. But what you might want to do is go for a, there really is no other way around this because their troops are expensive. I would suggest two boxes of neophytes or two boxes of acolytes, depending on how you want to do this, and a special character. Unfortunately, a lot of these special characters have to be made with the models themselves, or if you just so happen to have a couple of models, you could make them. But I digress, it is really difficult. I actually do have a few videos on how I converted some of my own using some bits. So if you can find some friends that'll be willing to give you some bits, you can make a couple of these characters really quickly. To make him, for instance, all you need is a Tau drone with no upgrades on it. Just turn it upside down. It looks like a hive city and put a neophyte next to it. Put him on a 32 millimeter base. For him, if your friend has an extra commissar for Imperial Guard, take that, put a sword in his hand, take away his other weapon, put a sword in his other hand, and boom, you have a locust. You can also run a locust with a sniper rifle. Or is that the locust? No, that's the Sanctus. Sanctus is really good with a sniper rifle. 
And all that is is a if you just take a, a Space Marine Scout or an Imperial Guard Scout with a sniper rifle, put them on a 32, and you can call them good from there. For this one, all you need is a normal neophyte and get an Arthesium, something to show that he is, you know, a medic. Uh, Imperial Guard boxes will work really well for making him. The banner is pretty simple as well. You can make a banner, but you do get the banner regardless if you buy this box set. You get a small banner and no one is going to stop you from just saying it's the Acolyte Icon Ward, just saying. For the Klamavis, all you really need is a neophyte with a Loud Hailer next to him. You can get Loud Hailers off of Chaos Space Marine bits really quickly. You can also get them off of tanks. Just a big speaker or something will work with a neophyte to make yourself a very cheap Clamavis. As for the rest of the characters, unfortunately, you do need to buy them. The... There is one character in here. Where is he? Wow, is he not here? Where is my favorite character? Did I pass him? Oh, right, he's in a box set. Never mind. Wait, why don't you just get the box set? Where is that box set? I always forget that they, they do this. Uh, boop. They don't actually include these, all kill teams. And you can get the kill team for it and get a really, really, really good start to an army just using the kill team box. Then you also get all the kill team rules, which benefits both parties. Unfortunately, I don't think they have it anymore, which is a real shame. The orcs that. Really? They have this one. But they don't have the opposite. Oh, that is a shame. Okay, never mind. They don't have the um, the six shooter. I can't remember his name right now. But let's just say you wanted to start an army. You can start it with as simple as a Magus and two boxes of these, or just one of these. This is actually really good, the Acolytes and Neophytes. It gets you a good range of what you need for the army. It does, however, go to 110, so I do apologize about that. That being said, you could just do two boxes of um, Acolyte Icons, Acolyte Icons, Acolyte Hybrids, or Neophytes, plus the uh, Magus to get a good box. Or if you really want to start out and be a little bit behind, you could start out with the Brood Coven and just get one box of hybrid of uh, Neophyte Hybrids, or Acolytes, you will be behind because you only have one troop. So your next few purchases will have to be filling out those troop choices. So keep that in mind, but it will give you three HQs and be a decent start to an army. It unfortunately will play very differently because it'll be a Supreme Command attachment. So uh, good luck. Yeah. So with that all said, I hope you enjoyed this video, the introduction to the Gene Seal Occult. And I hope that you continue to support the channel by subscribing to this channel and following all the links in the description down below. There you can follow me on all sorts of social media, including Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. You can also follow me on Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to help supporting the channel. A dollar a month is all that it's required, and you get access to certain videos that appear on Patreon, though they are scarce but it also gives you a particular title in my discord which allows you to join our game nights our tournaments as well as some of the cool exclusive streams i am mostly in my patreon chat so if you do want to hit me up that is the best way as always i'm norn queen alexis i love you guys bye